Hi there. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Alana here with my co-host Jamie. We're glad you joined us today. We're going to be talking about how prayer is very similar to exercise and some of the parallels that we can make and hopefully this is going to be some real encouragement, um, especially if you feel like your spiritual and prayer life isn't as fit as you'd like it to be. So before we dive into our discussion, let's open with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this picture that you give us in the Bible about running the race and about our spiritual lives paralleling our physical lives. We just pray that today's discussion will just bless each person listening, God, and that you would just help us to have kind of a revolutionary new picture of our prayer lives that will be encouraging, that will just inspire us to move forward and, and break through some of the barriers that keep us from living just with vibrant and passionate prayer lives. Amen. Our verse of the day, which I kind of mentioned, is 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25 from the NIV. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And I sort of thought this was kind of a, you know, it's a, it's paralleling our, uh, a race or, you know, ga- the games with um, our spiritual lives and prayer is definitely not an exception to that. For sure. Yeah. That was a perfect, perfect passage for today. So our just for fun question is what is your favorite kind of exercise and your least favorite? I would say, I was just thinking about this recently. My favorite kind of exercise is step aerobics. Is that really? 90s? Oh, yeah, like, that's like total 90s. I Maybe love even it. 80s, like late 80s. Uh-huh. So I actually looked to see if there were um, step aerobics on Netflix because uh-huh. I've really been wanting to exercise more lately. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was thinking, what is my favorite kind of exercise? Where have I seen the most huh. progress? step aerobics (laughs) what is it about it that you like so i like the fact that it is it it challenges your brain to memorize these different steps so when they call out a step you kind of have to know Ah. and then Mm -hmm. they call out the combo steps and you kind of have to like get into a rhythm i don't know something about it it's challenging for me because my memory is kind of all over the place. So it challenges me and it makes me feel this extreme feeling of accomplishment. That's cool. Because it's challenging. So they say that dancing is like one of the very best exercises you can do as you age. And I wonder if it's for, you know, kind of the same reason that, um, you know, the, the mental gymnastics you've got to do to keep the steps in mind and stuff. Yeah, I think that might be it. Because you have, yeah, because you kind of have that right and left brain connection, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Interesting. So what's your least favorite? I would have to say running. I love yeah. the idea of running, but it's <laughs> hard on my knees. And the last time I started running on a treadmill, I think also my very least favorite is running on a treadmill or doing a stationary bike where you're not going anywhere. Oh. And you're just kind of, I don't mind the stair stepper for some reason or the uh-huh. elliptical, but something about the, the bike and the the treadmill, but it's hard uh-huh. to ease. And something in my innards got like really stretched and strained and it made mm. bad things happen. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think I'm too old for running. <laughs> I hate to say that. Some people that are older than me that can run great, but. I'm oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But running yeah. would be my least favorite too. Like I would rather, I think I've even set up on the show, like I would walk for 10 hours straight before like I would voluntarily run for 10 minutes. <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, is that your, is walking your favorite? In terms of cardio, for sure. And then I also just like some, you know, stretching and, you know, that kind of thing. I'm, I'm more of the, you know, low impact. Um, I don't like to like strain and sweat. <laughs> I don't like to do things that hurt. <laughs> right. Like kind of why would you? Yeah. But you know, um, we, so we recently got a membership to the gym and my husband got a personal training package and he had a couple <sighs> sessions left over. And so I've had a couple sessions with this personal trainer. So I'm, I'm learning some of the weight machines and stuff 
And there were some of them that I actually find to be very relaxing, just the repetitive, like you have to stay pretty focused. Um, some of those I really like, some of them I'm never going to get into, <laughs> but there's some of the weight stuff that I was surprised to find as relaxing as it was. Oh, and I do love weight training. I, there's something about that, that it, it is, it's relaxing and you see progress, you know, you can track your mm -hmm. breath. Yeah. Pretty quickly. You can yeah, see progress. It's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk our segue now. This is actually a really good segue. So our segue is talking about prayer as exercise and some of the parallels that we can draw between exercise in the fitness world and the prayer world. And I think where a lot of people go wrong, similar to, um, you know, going wrong at the gym, like we got our gym membership, I think it was in November and we had to laugh because on January 1st, like there was no room in the parking lot. <laughs> And then by like March 15th, it was like, yeah, all of the, you know, all of the um, people who just signed up for New Year's, they're gone. Like, they, you know, they didn't. We're rooting for them to fail. We, we in wanted their them to fail, so we had our parking spots back. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, so many people treat prayer that way too. Like, I'm going to jump into this. I'm going to wake up an hour earlier every day. I'm spending a full hour with God every morning. I'm going to be 100% focused. And then when it doesn't happen, they get discouraged and then they give up. You know, I mean, I've done that dozens of times. You probably have too. I'm sure many of our listeners have been on that. And Anybody really who's tried a fitness routine knows how easy it is to do that. You go in with these huge goals, huge expectations, and especially if you forget this idea of kind of incremental growth, right? You know, then it's it just gets discouraging and you quit. Yeah. I remember so we when when my middle son who's now 8 was a baby, we had um a personal trainer, my husband and I did that for Christmas for each other. And so um, I remember the first time we both went in to get this training, we talked afterwards because we were, we went at different times and we were like, this, we didn't even work out. You know, this guy wasn't pushing us at all. And we were kind of complaining about it. And my husband kind of complained to the guy the next day. He's like, dude, I can handle more than this. Mm -hmm. And I said, sure, maybe you can, but do you, are you in this for the long haul or do you want to give up? Because if you, if I push you to what you can handle right now, there's a chance you could get injured and you know, you don't know your body cause you haven't been exercising. So we're easing it up. And, and he's like, trust me, I've done this many times. And it's that same exact concept of you want to be at the point of whatever this is to have arrived, which I mean, in prayer and in fitness, there's no like having arrived, but mm -hmm. you want to be at that expert level the mm -hmm. first time you sit down to do it and you can't do yeah. that or you will get discouraged. You'll uh, yeah. tear or, an important prayer muscle. Yeah. You look at people who are, you know, prayer warriors and you think, okay, if they can do it, I can do it. And then you find out you can't, you know, like there's, there's one rate room in the gym that I've never even gone into. And I told my husband, like, I'm waiting until you and I can go in together because it's intimidating in there. Like, you know, there's these big, a huge, you know, bodybuilding type people. And I, I don't have a desire to do that. I just want to be a little bit healthier. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not looking to bulk up or anything. Um, and so it can be, yeah, totally intimidating to just jump into something when you have no idea what you're doing. Well, and here's another parallel. Um, so I remember being in the gym and all of a sudden I looked over and I was still kind of working my way through how do you, what do you look like when you work out? What kinds of things do you do? How do you use the equipment? Mm -hmm. And I saw this woman doing this crazy routine of like these lunges and squats and walking around and just kind of off to the side. And it didn't look like anything anybody else was doing. And I was like, what on earth is she doing? And then I, I, then later on with this trainer, I, he, he told me how to do these lunges and squats. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so then I was that person doing those things. Right. I think with prayer, we sometimes put prayer in a box. Like it's got to look like a certain thing. It's got to be like, you know, the, like, you know, maybe you have a picture in your mind of Miss Clara in the mm -hmm. war room movie of this is what a prayer warrior is. Or maybe you have someone in your church that you look up to and you think that's what a prayer warrior looks like. And, 
that's not the case talk with your trainer, you know, God, the Holy Spirit. I mean, and, and you don't have to look like everyone else. And um, you could be that woman out there doing crazy, you know, who knows, pirouettes or whatever, or, you know, doing step Talking aerobics. Talking loud in her garage, that crazy lady. Yeah, and I wouldn't know about that particular <laughs> lady, but oh, I'm okay. sure there's okay. one out there somewhere. <laughs> No names, no names. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but I think that's important to remember, like, look to God for guidance. It doesn't have to look like you think it looks like. Right. Well, and you know, here's, I mean, the parallels are almost unending. But, yeah. um, you know, if you think about the gym, part of the question is also like, why are you going? Because there are so many different reasons to go to the gym. You know, are you doing it to get healthier? Are you doing it to meet a certain fitness goal? Are you meeting it? Or are you doing it so that you can look, you know, like some standard of attractiveness to others? You know, there are just so many different reasons. And I think it's important to know that with your prayer life. Why are you focusing on this? Is it so that people are going to look more up to you? Is it so that you can get what you want from God? Is it just to be more spiritually healthy? I don't think there's even like right or wrong reasons to want to be a better prayer. I think there are some reasons are a little more selfish than others. You know, if you're only praying because you want God to, you know, give you more things or something, but even just knowing your reasons. And if you are coming with selfish reasons, you may as well admit that, you know, because God knows what's deep in your heart anyway. It's not like you're, you can hide that from him, yeah. you know? So like if I were to go to my train and be like, you know what, I'm only here because I want to look really, really good in a swimsuit, we would be focusing on different things than when I come in and like, hey, I just want to, you know, get a little stronger, get a little healthier. So there's some of that too. You know, what is your goal? Why are you focusing on this? What's, what's the purpose? Is it just because it's like flossing your teeth and you know it's something you should do? Or, you know, what what are you hoping to get out of it? Or, you know, that's a probably a more selfish way of looking at it. But I think you know what I mean. Like, why bother? Yeah. Right? God loves you anyway, whether or not you work at prayer. Mm -hmm. So what's your motivation? That's and, important. Yeah. yeah that's, I, mean, it, I think that's a, for, a great first step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and so know what your motivation is. It can be quite a large number <laughs> of things. You know, what would you say, you know, off the top of your head is your kind of motivation at this stage in your life for deepening your prayers. I definitely just want to really look good in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. In that prayer <laughs> swimsuit. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. No. I get it. Uh-huh. No. Um, I was just thinking about that while you were talking about that. And so I've always had this picture in my head of wanting to be the kind of person that could, and I think I'm modeling this off of someone that I knew um, in Arizona and just the kind of person that could um, very, like, easily talk with a person, even someone they never met, and know how to pray for them mm -hmm. or ask how to pray for them. And I can't, it's just a picture that I have in my mind of the kind of person that I want to be. And maybe I picture myself being an older person doing this, but, you know, which is silly because you can do that no matter how old you are. There are children mm -hmm. that, that have that gift. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but being able to be with someone and encourage others through prayer, that's one thing by, mm -hmm. by, by praying pointedly. And the other thing is I just want to see God's power. Like I just, I've had a taste of that at times of just really seeing God's kingdom manifest on earth. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. is like, that's what I want. And I, I've only had a few of those like real breakthrough kind of moments, but I want that all the time. Like that's what mm -hmm. I want to be the norm. So I guess those are two of, you know, kind of two of those yeah. reasons. I don't know. What about you? Um, it's similar to the last one you said, you know, I just really, um, you know how much the quote impacted me about, you know, history belongs to the intercessors Yeah. and just realize, you know what, we, we truly can change the world by our prayers. And mm -hmm. to me, that's, you know, that comes with this, you know, I'm going to sound like Spider-Man and Uncle Ben right now, but like, that's a tremendous responsibility. Yes. You know, sometimes I wonder and, you know, this is kind of a guilt-laden question, and I'm not sure how much of my life I want to be motivated just by guilt, but sometimes I do wonder, like, what if I got to heaven mm -hmm. 
and realize, you know, like what if God played a movie of how different the world would be if I had prayed more, Mm -hmm. you know, or, or something (laughs) like that. And so, you know, that motivates me just, I think knowing the power of prayer and not wanting to abuse that, you know, like not wanting to wake up as Dorothy and realize that I've had the, you know, the shoes the whole time to get back home. Yeah. (laughs) And I just wasn't making any sense. So I think that's a big part of it for me. And then really the more, um, I guess I could call it the selfish side. Are you hearing screaming in the background? I'm hearing hearing a little bit of enthusiasm from Okay, we'll call it enthusiasm. (laughs) Not a ton. Okay. Um, Yeah, I'm recording with the kids home today. But one of my other reasons, so that's kind of my, um, you know, altruistic reason. I I do believe that prayer can change the world. I believe there's a lot of negativity right now. And I believe that prayer is the most powerful means to combat that. I also just really pursue that sense of peace and groundedness that comes when you're, you know, like in a very prayerful mindset. So not even like, you know, that you're just spending hours a day in prayer, but more just that, that kind of mindset that can come from, you know, knowing that the Lord's there. I don't know. I'm kind of jumbling my thoughts, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. No. And I, when I, cause I was starting to think also, you know, my last couple were sort of, um, you know, edited, not edited, but you know, those were nice reasons, encouraging others and seeing God's power. But I would say there's definitely, um, two selfish reasons that I can see that I would like to pray more and, and reasons that I want to pray better are, um, just my own peace. Um, I have in the past, I've, I tend to be an anxious, um, worrier. And so that has been a huge part of prayer in my life is combating that. And one reason that I cling to prayer is just selfishly, I don't think I could function without it and or function well without it. I think I would be a very different person without prayer. And the other thing is my kids and just I I desperately want to see them live abundant lives. And so that has become, they are one of the big reasons that I want to become closer to God so I can know more like what, what is it that I can pray for, for them that will just coax them into this fullest expression of, of God's abundant life for them that could be, you know, for them. So, and I'm sure there are far more, you know, I'm sure there are far more selfish reasons in there, but anyway, so that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea to, to kind of ponder that. Um, why am I praying? So another way that, um, that prayers like exercise is you can train yourself. You can train your brain in particular to pray. And Alana, we've talked about this before in, you know, the mind brain, wait, mind brain connection, the mind spirit connection, where the more you use your prayer muscles, the stronger they become. It becomes easier to focus it becomes easier to get in the zone, you know, where you're basically um, kind of in this place where you feel connected to God, where you feel, and I don't know if you've, I don't even know how to describe that, but basically you can get in the zone where you're able to shut out distractions, you're able to focus on God and really um, commune with Him and hear from Him. Um, You can recognize God's voice more easily the more you hear it and experience it, but you really can train yourself. And we're going to have another podcast episode about this, about actually having how you can increase your, your um, ability to focus by training your brain. And I just, I love that because we have this neuroplasticity that allows our brain to change and form and, and prayer is a spiritual practice, but it's also a physical, biochemical practice, electrical practice that our brain is very deeply involved in. So you really can train yourself to pray. Another one um, that kind of goes along with that is when you haven't prayed in a while, you might dread prayer. And, and you know, it's the same thing with working out. If you haven't done it a while, you might dread it. You might not really want to jump into it and it might seem like a pain. Maybe you're working out early in the morning, 
maybe you're praying early in the morning. Um, but once you get started, you're not going to want to stop the routine because of how it makes you feel and because of the results that you see, because you're going to actually see these positive things. And, you know, like I talked about seeing the power of God manifest, you know, his kingdom come and his will be done. So you're actually going to see the results as you, um, as you move along in that process. So that's, that's very much like exercise. Yeah, no, those are all really, really good points. I think too, another parallel we can draw to exercise is that you can lose your, your prayer muscles, you know? Um, it's not that you're gonna totally forget how to pray, but you know, if you've been in a season of real kind of intense prayer training, that doesn't sustain you without continued practice. I think, I think we've may have even talked about it before, this idea of kind of like coasting on spiritual, like old spiritual energy, you know, well, like you've talked about it with your novels and just yeah. you know, your prayer. Yeah. You've talked about that with your writing. Yeah. Like I prayed about this a whole lot, so now I'm fine. And then right. you kind of coast, but you can only coast for so long before mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's friction and, and all that. We can even get all sciencey and like get into physics and stuff. But, um, you know, so that's another thing with prayers, I think. And maybe a misconception. Some people think that, you know, A, some people think you're just, some people are born good prayers. Well, no. <laughs> you know, it takes, um, you know, it takes that kind of training. It takes that focus. But it also takes training and focus to maintain a healthy prayer life. And so even if you've had this amazing, strong prayer life in the past, that doesn't mean that you're actively doing everything that you should be doing right now, you know? Mm -hmm. I do think, though, that even if you do slip back and slip into unhealthy routines or not praying very much at all, my experience has been when that happens for me and then I jump back in, it's kind of hard to start up, but it comes back more quickly. I feel like it's kind of like exercise in that respect. Mm -hmm. Muscles have been primed before and they kind of recognize, oh, I know what this is. And so I think that it, it wasn't lost time if you do have a hang up and you follow for the sure. Line. You're not starting all the way back. I don't think square so. one. No, I agree. Although sometimes it can be that can make it almost harder. Like imagine someone who like in their twenties ran marathons and then, you know, had kids and took 15 years off of running and starts up again. And I feel like, like if you or I were going to start training for a marathon, we would expect it to be hard, right, yeah. <laughs> but for the person who used to be able to do it and now has to work to do it, that can be uh, a big mental hurdle. Oh. So I think that's, you know, kind of the other side is you might have gotten even a little spoiled and that you're used to it being easy. And so when it isn't easy, you can, you know, the temptation might be to just throw a little fit and stop altogether and give up. <laughs> yeah. Well, my husband deals with that because he used to do competitive road biking mm -hmm. in Arizona and he was riding, you know, a hundred miles a day over the weekends and just crazy amounts, at least to me. And, um, and here in Alaska, it's road biking is more difficult because all the gravel and mm -hmm. you know, to, and it's probably only certain seasons. Year. Yeah. Right. So he started fat tire biking and mountain biking, but the last time he got out his road bike, he was just like, wow, this is so, I, I used to be way better. You know, it's yeah. just, he has that memory of what it felt yeah. like. So I could see that being discouraging. It didn't oh, make yeah. me quit, but it just definitely was like, man. That yeah. Is, and I even told him, you'll get it back more quickly because you used to be there. Right. But it's harder mentally, right. I think. Like, yeah. um, I really don't like playing my violin anymore oh. because I don't sound as good as I used to. Oh. And it's really stupid because I know if I worked at it, I could get back to where I was. And like you said, it would be quicker. It would be easier. Mm -hmm. But I don't like the sound that's coming out of it right now because I used to sound way right. better than that. A you high know? Standard. So, yeah. So, yep. Yeah. All, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all these analogies. So I like this point though, that we can kind of close with that any prayer is better than no prayer, you know? So some people are so, and I see this in exercise too. Some people are so extreme. It's like, well, if I'm not going to exercise for two hours a day, then it's not worth doing. 
Right. And not many people have that time or can sustain that in the long term. And so they're, you know, they just have this kind of all or nothing attitude about it. And prayer is, and I think that's why I really resonate with the kinds of exercise that really are just sort of the slow and steady, you know, Mm -hmm. like, hey, let's walk for five miles. Or tracking your steps, you know, and getting steps in here and there and just being exactly a few steps here and there really adds up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So this is our great segue into our, uh, our episode on prayer walking, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we should do prayer walking videos. Do you remember those um, like prayer step aerobic thingies? Prayer it was a thing. Step it, really aerobic? Was. it was a thing. Are you drooling? I am. I had no idea. <laughs> That's what I'm going to be Googling in our next yeah, right. break. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's close with our... Um, our blessing and benediction and just want to leave people with this reminder that yes, prayer takes work, Mm -hmm. but every, every time you work at it, you do get better. So don't be discouraged. Just keep going at it. And yeah, so let's close. So our blessing today says, may the word of God dwell in you richly, guiding you, leading you in the way you should go. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, may God's word be a light for your path and a lamp to your feet. May his word fill you with the knowledge of his will and thoroughly equip you for every good work. And our benediction is from 2 Peter 3.18. May you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen.